Hi everyone, it's Tristan. In this episode, we'll talk about adding executors to your easy commands library. So let's get started. In this episode, we'll do just a simple executor, just so you can get a hang of what is gonna is going on with this library, basically. So we'll just add something new right here. We'll add, for example, a say command. All right, just so we can check how options work and how to, yeah, basically build a command with easy commands. So let's go. So right here, I've just added this right now, right away, because uh, that's going to be the name of my class. It's going to be say command. So you want to right click on your main package uh, and just create a new one. And we'll just call it commands. That's where we're going to put all of our commands. So let's right click on it again. Let's just say say command. There we go. So right here, we can now import this command. It's going to give us an error, but that's totally fine. When you come back inside of that class, you can now extend it by command executor. As you can see right now, the errors should be fixed and that's uh, we're ready to go. So when you hit alt insert on your keyboard, if you're under idea, you can override methods right here. And as you can see, you're going to have a bunch of methods right here to, that you can override. And let's get uh, name description is owner only. Let's get the options. Uh, let's get the execute and uh, that'll be it. Click OK. Yes, so it gives us a bunch of functions. Uh, let's go through them. So get name basically will be the name of your command will be how do you execute the command? So it will be a string. And for example, I'll just say say, you know, it's a say command the description, you'll see later on where it's going to be located at. But for now, let's just say flash say message, the bot will send you back the message is owner only, I'll just say false, you can say true. So basically only the server owner right here will be able to use the command. It's pretty self explanatory. Uh, right here, get options. All right, so that's where it gets a bit interesting. So if I do options dot add, and right here, we can add a new option, a new option data, and right here, there's going to be an option type. And as you can see, we can we can put a bunch of options. But for us right now, it's just gonna be an option type string, uh, then it's going to be called message. And the description of this, this option is let's just say this message will get sent by the bot. All right, so that's pretty much it. And then we can just return options right here, then execute. Now that's where basically the code of your command will get executed. That's what will get executed for your command. Let's get started with that. You can remove that super we don't we won't need it anymore. So first of all, let's just say oops, nope, let's say data dot defer reply. And let's queue that. So what does this do? So the defer reply will make the bot think You'll see in a moment when I will show you and the Discord server actually what it does, but it will just make the bot think before responding to your message. So then we can say, oops, data get hook. So that's really important. So the hook basically is going to be the defer reply. So we get the defer reply and then we can send a message and the message will be data get command. We can get the options now. If I get the option zero and I get it as string then we can queue all of that. So basically what it does it's, um, it's going to defer reply. So the bot's going to think for a second. And then we're going to think we're going to get that thinking moment to send a message, which is the data, which we get a common. So the common is uh, basically this right here, the common executor. Yeah, it's pretty much it. And we get the options. So the options is what we've got over here. And if we get the option zero, it's gonna be that one, it's gonna be the first line. So it's gonna be a string message, basically the option zero is that and then we can get it as string. So it's gonna be the message that's gonna be the content of, our, of the message we want to send and then dot Q is uh, just to tell Discord or actually to tell uh, GDA that we want this to be queued as an action, like an upcoming act action. So that was pretty much it for this command. As you can see, it's pretty, it's pretty easy now create comments. If I go back inside of main, uh, I've added my executor right here, that should work. Right now, as you can see, I've started about once, but I only have the help command. So let's restart about again. As I said in the last video, it's a little latency with Discord basically. Now, as you can see, the command is actually there now. All right, so now back on Discord, I can now say slash say, as you can see, it's going to tell me YouTube bot as command say, and the option is going to be a message. So let's, so let's say, hello, everyone, my name is YouTube. But there we go. And as you can see, the bot actually responded with Hello, everyone, my name is YouTube bot. So that was pretty simple, a pretty quick video just to t just to show you basically the, the basics of those commands of the command executor that I've added. It's pretty simple. Oh, and that's an error right here that I've got because the content was null. Let's fix that right here. Let's say if data get comment or get options dot is empty I just return that statement right here and just let's get the hook actually let's say data dot get hook dot send message and i believe that if we do set ephemeral true and then we queue all of that right here we can just say you need to specify a message for the bot to 
you know, let's just say you need a specified message. Let's just do it simple. Uh, let's restart the bot. So as you can see, our command is still here. If I come back over here and I just say, say, I just send it like that. You need to specify a message, but it didn't send it correctly. So let me fix, fix that. Let's me, let me put it ephemeral. Okay. So I've looked it up a bit and if we want to set it ephemeral, which I don't know, I don't really understand why it doesn't work like that, but we just need to take the defer reply, put it under the if statement and right here on top, I can now say da 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 get event dot reply. Now, instead of send a message, we're just going to use reply. Set ephemeral like that and Q. And now this should work. So the command is still registered. Let's go into discord. Now let's say slash say, there we go. You need to specify a message and nobody just, nobody saw that. So great. That's perfect. It works fine. Exactly what we wanted. And now let's test also if this other piece of code now works. Let's make them say hello world. There we go. It works. Just execute it like that. You need to specify a message. Perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. So yes, that was pretty much it for the simple little short video that I wanted to show you how to just use the basics of commands. So yes, you can do a bunch of other stuff with that. You can, as I said, you can defer the reply, get the command, get the hook, get the event. Actually, you can right away get the slash command interaction event because I didn't add everything to the event data. You'll get why later on I use the event data in the next videos. You'll get why I use that. But yeah, you can get the command sender, get the channel, get the text channel. You can, you can get pretty much whatever you want. self member, self member, which is going to be the bot, uh, self voice state was going to be the uh, voice state of the bot member voice state, which will be the uh, voice state of the command sender. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and we'll see us in the next one. Keep coding guys.